Hello all. Welcome to Time to React. I hope everyone is safe and healthy. Today we are going to talk about atomic data driven design elements. Let me present this. So this is Kanan Ganeshan, senior front end developer at Simply Business. I do have close to 11 years of experience in front end development and close to 6 years of experience in React development. I'm an active contributor to Stack Overflow, GitHub, and uh, you can find me in LinkedIn as well. So as I mentioned, today we are going to talk about atomic data-driven design elements, kind of a technical introduction towards it. Consider a requirement. Let's say I got a requirement to build sign-in and register pages, two different page with all the necessary functionality. So before start code, I used to think which approach is best for my development before I mean this feature which approach helps a lot in terms of uh, you know future forecasting like uh, reusability efficiency so I'll take uh, plenty of parameters to be considerable parameters that I'll take before start write code in this presentation I'm going to talk about three different approaches from there I will explain how atomic data driven design elements helps a lot. Let's take a first, first approach. So this is kind of a traditional approach using React. I will have uh, two different JSX file, uh, let's say login and register, both will embedded into each different pages, like login page will call login.jsx, where I will hard code each and every element. If you see, I'm hard coding the uh, HTML tags, along with their own uh, properties, like labels, I'm hard coding all those things. Register also, let's say I'm not reusing, reusing anything and uh, uh, I'm just hard coding all the informations. So, there's a problem with this approach because if you see like I'm repeating code, you can see like login.jsx and register.jsx, I'm repeating the same code of input, header, button, anchor, Let's say if I wanted to theme, then obviously I'll end up like a problem because I'm repeating uh, the I mean I'm duplicating the codes. And as I mentioned, like very specific components to each pages, then I will end up have end up like having a login page and register page. Then I will uh, embed the components to be specific to each pages. Login page will have login component and uh, register page will have register component. There is no reusability. Let's say a new feature comes. Let's say uh, uh, I, I was asked to create a, a COVID form. Then obviously again, I need to create a same uh, form. Then again, I'll end up like all the uh, functionality. Uh, let's say I, I will again need a same effort. So there is no efficiency in the development. Inconsistent, inconsistency between components and view. Stale get creation for UX become complex. Lack of precision in estimating development time because I'm duplicating and uh, you know uh, each and every time I'm creating uh, the same components again and again. Side effects, hard coding business logic on UI. This is one of the major problem. The reason is if you hard code the business logics in the UI, then obviously any changes to the business logics, which frequently will change, we need to come and change in my front end code. I need to deploy the whole application again and again, which is obviously painful and uh, uh, as part of, uh, based on my, op my, my opinion, I can say like front end React is only for a presentation purpose. We shouldn't do any kind of uh, uh, calculation or computation on top of uh, React. So it's, it should be purely a uh, presentation purpose. So the first approach has these kind of problems. So let's say an idea, how we can overcome this problem. Uh, because we are having everything as a, as a, as a specific uh, to each components. Let's say I take this example. Rather than having a login button, why don't, why don't I have a, a button? Rather than having a text box with a label, why don't, have, why don't, why don't I have a, a you know, label and placeholder? Like this I can have, I can generate a generic components that I can reuse anywhere. Like I can create one time that can be reused like n number of different forms. Everything is linked. So once I have created my uh, components, then I can move the components, which is a generic components. I can move it to anywhere and I can create my own features. Uh, I don't need to uh, repeat my code or I need, I, I don't need to uh, do it again and again. This will save plenty of, plenty of uh, development effort for me. Let's say this is a kind of, uh, once I have done with my creating a library, I mean list of components, 
generic components then i will put it in a library and anyone can uh, uh, pull that uh, component and they can build their own ui to achieve this we need to go for the atomic design principles we need to follow atomic design principles so what is atomic design principle it has five different phases one is atom molecules organisms templates and pages atoms are a small component molecules are more than one atom organisms is more than uh, one molecules and vice versa like it will go tell uh, templates and pages this uh, gif will explain you how this is currently working i mean how the whole idea would be so using this atomic components i'm going to do my second approach i mean first approach is hard coding second approach with atomic uh, atomic uh, on top of atomic components so to achieve my requirement of creating a uh, two different uh, registration and sign in i will end up like uh, having four different reusable components so once i have created this four reusable component i will be able to complete both uh, uh, registration and login pages you can see you approach using atomic i have a same two different jsx where you can see i have a label component input component link component button component which i'm reusing for registered or jsx also so i am only changing the properties alone i mean the text and other things and uh, uh, we can reuse everything so this this will reduce plenty of development effort but still it has set of problems let's say uh, as of now we 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 got to overcome with a set of issues that we discussed for the hard coding approach from the hard coding approach first one is, first one is inconsistency between components and view which we we got overcome and uh, repeated code stale guide creations no reusability no re efficiency everything we got overcome but we still have four more issues a uh, very specific component to each pages so as i as as i mentioned obviously we'll end up like two different jsx files and this jsx file is specific to each pages introducing new feature using existing components require considerable amount of, amount of uh, development effort the thing is if a new feature comes then obviously i need to uh, find out what are all the available components and i need to create a page and, in, and i need to uh, uh, organize our current atomic components into the pages so this will take a development effort and also again i'll end up like hard coding business logics on the ui you can see i'm hard coding the business logics uh, like business requirements or business or text or label inside my component such as welcome back sign in to continue email address and uh, forget password with the link everything is hard coded here so as i mentioned front end is only for presentation purpose we shouldn't compute or we shouldn't calculate or we shouldn't do anything we shouldn't hard code anything in my in our front end which will obviously cause pain uh, in if any if any changes uh, came into a particular uh, component and the last point is require front end development for small changes on component as it's hard coded on pages let's take this example if uh, business business team they are coming and saying like they wanted to change the label for the particular sign in login page and register page then i again i need to go and see uh, go and change my change the name in my uh, login.jsx or register.jsx and i need to generate a bundle and i need to push this code to server to make it live so this require considerable amount of effort like code review and other things then obviously it will take a uh, development effort so to overcome this uh, four different issues that we have seen third approach which is a data driven design elements it's kind of a, a introduction like uh, the the overall view is uh, a form or elements can be driven through a data objects each atomic component can be pulled based on a data object within its properties so in the second approach if you see like uh, I'm, i'm i'm having an atomic component and i'm hard coding those atomic component in my pages rather than data driven design elements is something like you can i mean each piece of ui i mean piece of ui is called component each component can be called using data objects within its properties so each piece of ui has its own key and if you call the key then uh, react will serve the respective piece of ui i'll explain in the further further slides in a clear manner advantages it increases uh, productivity and reusability 
allows us to keep isolating the business rules and front end ui so uh, this is this is one of the major uh, uh, point uh, because we are not hard coding anything once you are done creating the components then that's it you will never touch it again server driven user interfaces means we can modify and introduce new form of elements simply by adding and updating within the, within the data no need to touch the ui portion multiple times so in this case as this is data object server can drive the ui so server can decide what kind of a data that ui should present and it can control entire uh, user interfaces i mean entire entire ux behavior server objects so as i mentioned everything is data objects is is pretty easy to manipulate the data data objects rather than uh, going and finding the respective elements in the component and changing those obviously will cause plenty of pain then everything is data object manipulate the data to create dynamic ui is much more simple writing test cases is easy and no need to write for each pages of feature so we are not going to write test cases for each pages or each features we are going to write test cases for our components so once we are done with test casing creating a test case for our components then we are done we no need to worry about anything so in this particular example i have created uh, 11 different uh, uh, data driven design elements the, and uh, i this 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 uh, 11 different uh, data driven components were not tied up with any business rules it's purely driven through data objects so i'm going to uh, show a demo on that so using this approach once i have done with developing these 11 components then that's it i will never ever touch my components again i will expose the properties to the uh, server team or any other team then they can directly utilize those properties and they can drive the ui front end uh, like uh, if any new feature or project comes it's kind of a matter of minutes like drag and drop i can move the components and i can build the ux journey i'll show you how that works in the upcoming slides so as i mentioned i have created 11 different components which is a data driven you can see uh this objects represent the piece of ui that you are currently seeing here let's say it has a type header which is unique for each component each component has its own type type is a key for us uh, for uh, uh, react to identify and serve the respective component and you can see these elements like image text label everything is configured here let's say image uh, the image location this can be any url we can give it we can dynamically change it and the all text image position whether we can display top bottom left right we can configure it text align can be left right center title uh like business health insurance and subtitle 1 or subtitle 2 we can have it i mean if we if we if we can even add accessibility parameters uh like area parameters and we can add uh, tracking informations as well so as this is this block of object is representing this ui so that is what i wanted to highlight and this one component can able to behave in different way like if i uh, like as i mentioned like the image position if you move to uh, top to left right you can see a different different ux behaviors and that align uh, text align will be center left right we can create n number of different different behaviors second component select uh, let's say uh, uh, as i mentioned similar to uh, first component uh you can see the type select is a key for my component this visible this flag is, is controlling whether to display the particular component or not there are uh, this is this is introduced for dynamic elements and the field name which is unique placeholder what you wanted to see and the label it can be position can be top ref, left right we can configure it so once we are done creating a component then one component is equal to n different behaviors so uh like if you are if you have 11 components then you can expect 60 to 70 different varieties of ux i mean ui behaviors so uh there are certain conditions there certain scenarios where i may need to introduce dynamic elements let's say when tapping one button i need to introduce a new block of ui so in that case uh that can be achieved through preconditions so we have a precondition and post post condition in our data objects i'll explain it while showing a demo so i'm going to show a demo of playground playground is something like a ground where the 11 components that i have created 
uh, how this works and uh, what is uh, how, how this looks like uh, data driven and uh, what are all the advantage towards it i'll explain that so this is playground as you are seeing like 11 components that i have shown uh, in the uh, slides were listed here and uh, you can see these each and every component is a molecules and each component has its own properties it's a property like data driven design elements and you can see i have created uh, different different ux behaviors using the 11 components that i have so as i mentioned it's data driven i can see the entire uh, uh, data that i mean the elements that you are currently seeing in the ui the data is currently available in the right side when when you tap playground and also i can control each and each and every pieces so basically as i mentioned there is no business rule tied with the component this can be moved to anywhere like i can move it to top and bottom the whole functionality remains same sorry so uh, let's say uh, as i mentioned like uh, we can control this the uh, control the entire uh, json i mean the entire page state using context and we can control uh, individual uh, 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 data driven component so in this component as i mentioned like uh, this is my properties so let's say i wanted to change this data so you can see like i can change the value and i can see a dynamic user experience this this is much more useful for anyone i mean especially ux team to find out uh, you know uh, based on the available components they can able to generate their own ux experience and uh, this is much more i mean this is 100% achievable and the subtitle also i can remove it let's say uh, test sme health and as i mentioned i can add any image also so this image i can give a, a you know third party like a direct direct link as well so everything is data driven and one more advantage towards it towards this is when i remove this image it will behave like a, a title with sub i mean a title with subtitle if i remove subtitle it will be label so i have one component which is label that component is capable of behaving three different ways so like this uh, anyone can generate their own form and they can build their own ux user experience journey so i have 11 components and these components can be dynamically invocable dynamically generatable so if you see in my playground i didn't have anything right now in this page let's say i'm going to uh, create a form creating a form uh, for me is rather than means kind of uh, uh, seconds rather than hours or uh, days let's say i'm going to uh, create a covid form i simply tap a label which will generate me a, a placeholder a label component and i need to input text and i need one button i'll go ahead and simply change the properties covid form please fill the details this is much more useful for ux team and other uh, business team to find out which is possible and uh, which is an efficient uh, you know uh, uh, and it is kind of a uh, uh, we can we can deliver it in faster manner because this is a data driven okay so i'm going to change the name of my input let's say this is first name and this is a last name and this would be summit okay so now i have created a form and uh, i even have an action for the button everything can be configurable let's say uh, there are certain scenario where I, I may need to introduce dynamic population of elements. Let's say when, when user tap one particular element, I wanted to introduce a new element. In that case, let's, let's take an example. I wanted to introduce a, a select button. I'm going to change this to uh, sex. 
मेल फीमेल यू कैन सी द चेंजेस वेर रियली लाइव एंड यू कैन एडिट द फॉर्म एंड विद विद रियल लाइव कॉम्पोनेंट्स रियल फ्रंट एंड रियक्ट कॉम्पोनेंट्स ईच वन ऑफ दम वेर मॉलिकुल्स रियक्ट कॉम्पोनेंट्स सो एस ए मैंशनड नव आई एम गोइंग टू शो लास्ट नेम ओनली फॉर फीमेल्स सो इन दैट केस आई नीड टू सिंपली मैप दिस विथ फीमेल वेन यू टैप दिस आई शो हाउ दिस वर्कस when you tap male the the block will not appear when you tap female you will see this particular block how this works as i mentioned you can see in the properties precondition is generated precondition is something like a mapping with the particular object as this is object it's pretty more easy for a developer to map any field with any i mean uh, first component with n n nth component or nth component with first component the relationship can be easily built and it is pretty more straight forward and it is pretty, it's easy to understandable so as i mentioned like uh, you can see the field name uh, the field name is a unique as i mentioned and the values uh, female so if you see the properties the field name is select 42 which will obviously generate and it will uh, populate and it will map with the respective uh, element and it is it will be tied up with an element so other than uh a uh, female if you choose any options the block will not appear so this is one of the major advantage towards it and as i mentioned you can generate n number of different components let's say progress progress bar you can see everything is configurable everything is configurable whatever you are seeing in the ui uh everything is a data object data object can be easily manipul manipulatable and you can do whatever you want and I I have enabled uh, HTML5 uh, uh, drag and drop concepts. I mean drag and drop, so so that you can build your own form. So if you see, if you take a look of this example, I created a form like in in like uh, 50 to 60 seconds, just configuring the respective images and uh, text labels. That's all. Once you are done, simply tap a playground, which will generate the information to towards your components. So. simply copy this uh, json data and hand over to server team if server uh, returns this response then your react will return piece of uis that you have currently seeing so as i mentioned this is a data driven if server can able to handle the ui let's say if i wanted to change the name they can simply change the data here they can see the uh, changes in the ui so this can be usable by non tech people or not only a tech people a uh, non tech people can also uh, uh, able to understand and they can easily play with this playground that is what it meant and this is what uh, mean that is the main purpose uh, we have created this playground so i believe everyone is curious to know how this works let me uh, quickly go over the code i am using create react app as a base uh, and i have created 11 different components that i have uh, shown it to you in the uh, in the in the playground demo so this is my index application i am using a context to store my uh, uh, initial state if you see my uh, initial step one you can see the list of components were uh, hard I mean uh, it's kind of hard coded it's not hard coded like i have a, a default state which has all the data i as i mentioned i'm using a uh, 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 read read i mean context you can see the entire uh, data which you have seen uh, in the first step the entire data that you have seen for for demo purpose i i, I did but however i have shown you like i i can generate a uh, number of different different data based on the user selection you can see simply simply by tapping you can see in the right side the json is getting generated okay so let me explain how this works as i mentioned i'm using context and uh, uh, this is for html5 uh, the drag and drop provider and i have a form this is a beauty like i have only one form and this form is capable of generating are supporting in different forms or in different elements in different uh, behaviors towards a ux journey i am not hard coding or i don't have any step 1 step 2 step 3 or step 1 different uh, uh, pages i have only one form 
that form is capable of handling n different pages so this how this is possible uh, i'm using a lazy for importing my uh, uh, components in a dynamic way which is much more efficient way and i'm using latest hooks uh, for handling my current step or next step and other things uh, the main key part here is uh, this, this is this is where i generate the components uh, when you sir tap label i will generate label like this for each things uh, this is the main part of my component element factory element factory is responsible for throwing uh, a piece of ui based on the data objects so it's kind of a factory you give 10 objects or 100 objects you will get so 100 different piece of ui it's it's based on uh, data objects so if you see my element factory it is pretty straightforward and it is pretty pretty simple that is what i want to highlight it's not a complex uh, you know algorithm or something it's 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 plain and a pretty simple logic so you can see i have 11 components i'm using lazy import to load the component and here is there here here is where i'm getting the whole uh, context state object and i'm passing the properties and you can see like i'm mapping this with each uh, key it's a type with the component you can see i have 11 components 11 components keys are mapped with uh, each each keys are mapped with the component i am driving the entire uh, functionality towards two different keys one is visible second one is type this type is a key parameter key determination determining parameter to show which component to serve which component so basically if you give an object with a type text this this element factory will throw a text component like this one component will get 100 uh, uh, list of uh, objects it will throw 100 different uh, uh, piece of ui there is no limit for this that is what i want to highlight yes so this element factory and let's go to the component component is pretty simple pretty straightforward it will it asks this this is responsible for uh, 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 rendering a piece of ui so as i mentioned atomic components this, these are the molecules this is not an atom this is a molecules more than one atoms were tied up with a, tied up as a molecule and i'm using prop type to make it uh, to check whether the properties whether the uh, um, the server objects is properly serving to render the piece of ui so this is to ensure and i have uh, as i mentioned I, I have a store let's 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 play with this store for a moment so uh, there there is an additional advantage that i have added like all the operations that the user is currently doing uh, as i don't have a backend service integrated uh, i'm storing that in my local storage and you can see the data objects which was generated uh, based on our interaction so let me remove this uh, as i mentioned this is a default uh, initial state for my application as of now you can see like six steps i have let me introduce a seventh step let's say this step is test step as this is data dot data objects when i save it when i refresh this you can see the seventh step the step is test step i can play whatever i want so as i mentioned like this is a this is what uh, uh, data driven design element does this element factory is not limited that is one of the major advantage it's not limited uh, you can give like 1000 or 2000 uh, component objects you can get uh, different different user user behavior user experience you can you can able to get it from the component let me explain important points to take away first point component property should be well defined and documented this is one of the key point because this components library is not only going to be used by developers other teams also they are going to utilize huge impact on cross team development effort this is not only impacting an effort for the dev i mean only not only for the developers it's also have a huge impact for ux designers testers and business people because uh, we have everything in a visualized library so ux team they can easily generate their prototype 
and they can hand over the uh, object, I mean, the data objects to server team. When we have 25 plus component, then it's more than enough to produce 100 different behaviors, hence the productivity and delivery time would be super fast for new projects. Because I have a necessary component, that component is capable of behaving like any different way, then that is more than enough for me. I have a visual playground, I can see what, what my exact user experience will be. And one of the main point is, uh, UX team is not going to do something on the prototype. They are working with the real live components. The styles and everything which is supposed to be live. I mean, they are, they are playing with the live components, for example. So uh, this, this will be impacting their uh, work, working uh, way also. That is what I want to highlight. And visual playground library. As you have seen the playground, it's a visual playground library. Generate your own UX prototype, hand over the data object to server team. Once you are done, once you are uh, uh, creating a certain number of components, then you can simply hand over the playground to anyone. They can generate their own prototype. The main uh, advantage is no need to touch front end code. Write once and leave it. This is one of the key key takeaway uh, because uh, you know front end uh, each and every time like for small small copy changes, I need to go and change my uh, front end application and the whole application needs to be compiled again and then we need to bundle it and we need to deploy it into server, which will take plenty of others effort also and for the developers also, which is uh, which is kind of a bad. So in that case, uh, data driven is something like a server side change. They can simply change the property. It's a data object. It's not, a, it's not anything like it's kind of a JSON object. They can change it and uh, uh, server is driving the entire user user interface number of pages elements behaviors labels etc etc so front end developer effort is almost zero let's say if a new component comes or new requirement comes at that time front end developer have to expose a property that property uh, not can be utilized not only for the current project that property can be used for a uh, new projects as well that is one of the highlight so whatever you do, it is a reusable one, can be utilized across our organization. So as we have we have gone through like three different approaches, this is kind of an approximate effort for each approach. For hard coding approach, I'll have, uh, you know, you can see like overall 56 hours for my, uh, for this hard coding approach. As I mentioned, like UX designer, they need to design for each and every pages, each and every component, each and each and every piece of UI. Uh, so obviously their effort will go high. Front end developer, obviously 16 hours for them because they are hard coding everything. Any changes they need to come back and they need to do it. Let's say a new requirement like COVID form is coming, then obviously they need again 56 hours for them. For the back end developer, it remains same because they are exposing services. They are not doing anything on top of uh, components or other things. Test test, they need to ensure uh, the application is properly working or not. And discussion meetings will take much more time because everything is hard coded. A small change, again, they need to come for the discussion meetings, whether it is possible, uh, front end developer need to confirm it is possible or not. So there are back and forth, we can reduce using uh, data driven, these kind of uh, meetings and discussions. Second approach is of atomic design approach, which is uh, most of our companies are using this approach. And this is much more time saving approach. This is much more useful in a way like uh, for the front end development, like once I have done like four components as I, mentioned, and as, I, as I shown in the previous slides, I have only four components that can able to support two different features, two different pages. So front end development is uh, almost half and the UX de designer's effort will remain as uh, somewhat less compared to our previous hard coding things. And back end developer remain same because they need to write services, testers will also remain same. Discussion and meeting will go a bit down. The reason is uh, we have only four components and it the changes will be much more or less because we are reusing styles and other things because we are using atomic design on top of it. The third and final approach is data driven approach. So in this approach, you can see like front end development effort is almost zero uh, for the reusing the existing components. UX designers effort is going a bit like, uh, like this, let's say, this, uh, halfway below. The thing is, uh, UX designers, we are handing over the library and they have the list of, uh, uh, you know, components and they can uh, play around it. They can assemble the uh, UX and they can generate a prototype. It's not a prototype. They're doing what actually uh, going to live. 
it's not something like uh, they are doing some prototype and handing over the developer developers again need to steal anything it's nothing is there they are the one doing a uh, development ux team is doing a development once they are done they need to copy the json objects and hand out to the server team back end efforts will remain same uh, testers will be much more less because it's a data driven it's a data driven approach and uh, tester needs to ensure if everything is working fine or not discussion as meetings is going much more uh, low the reason is this is a visual library and they can see what is working and what is not working and as i mentioned front end developer effort is much much more less uh, like one hour is just an ensure whether everything is working fine i mean whether ux team is uh, doing uh, as an expected way uh, just, just to ensure so this may be less than one hour also it's kind of an, a comparison like approach one approach two and approach three so as you, as you can see the differences for the approach into approach two you can save some time approach three you can save mul- um, more time this 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 is this is not uh, effort for uh, you know a first time development but in future like if you do like uh, if you deliver like two to three projects then fourth project this 20 hours you will never you you may not you may not need at this 20 20 hours also it will be go down so because you have everything is ready so it's like a live component which is ready to go anyone can assemble and uh, they can generate their own ui we need one server developer simply push it they can do like if you have like 50 components that's it just simply sit uh, you can play with the uh, playground and uh, generate a json give it to server team they can uh, do the rest of the things so as this is data driven design elements we need to be ensure everything is working as expected this is a crucial part of uh, uh, crucial part is testing so uh, testing shoot uh, we will uh, we are we are currently utilizing uh, two different uh, uh, libraries one is just and react testing library in other words we can call this as visual testing library because everything is in a visual manner so the, the testing would be much more uh, easy and uh, this will be helpful for us to understand how data driven is properly working we need to ensure the properties are properly are responding with expected ux piece of ui that's it like if you have 10 properties change it in a dynamic way and expect a proper uh, piece of ui is returning or not that's it so type of testing that we are currently focusing is functional integration component based testing snapshot based testing this testing is more than enough for us to ensure our uh, data driven components are uh, working perfectly so i hope everyone uh, got an uh, information about uh, data driven uh, approach uh, if you have any questions please do let me know thank you